Good evening. It has been 72 days since he was elected, and in five days, he will deliver his first State of the Nation address. But for some, and perhaps for many, it is still a struggle to call him by his new title, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. That struggle is only a small part, but a symbolic one, of the continuing failure or refusal of some, which may actually number in the millions, to come to terms with the new political reality. How do we move forward? Let's talk. I'm John Neri, and you are in the public square. The journalist and media entrepreneur Robbie Alampay, in a first opinion piece or editorial for Puma Podcast, made a distinction between moving on and moving forward. Does that make sense? More importantly, does that help those who still need to come to terms with Marcus's victory and his majority mandate? Let's ask a scholar of politics and a specialist in social movement studies. Dr. Carmel Abau, Doc Melay, is Assistant Professor of Political Science and the new Chair of the Political Science Department at the Ateneo de Manila University. Good evening, Doc Melay. Thank you for joining us today in the public square. Hi, John. Good evening. Let me ask by talking about uh, uh, social movements. Um, I think that uh, it's indisputable that there was a genuine political movement that coalesced uh, behind Lenny Robredo and Kiko Pangilinan. Uh, is this sense of not being able to move on? Is this usual with, you know, movements that have, you know, created the momentum but fell short of uh, electoral victory? Yes, especially an electoral movement. No, because mm -hmm. essentially, what uh, what emerged uh, was in response to an electoral competition. So that was essentially an electoral movement. No, mm -hmm. and uh yeah, yung kita mo, I think ang ang nangyari kasi medyo na surprise tayo, eh, di ba? Because mm -hmm. we did not know that such movement would emerge. And movements are really like that. They are they they pertain to visibility, no, of some mm -hmm. purpose or mm -hmm. ano. So, I I think that was what happened and uh when you talk about moving forward, for example, we really have to take stock of what that movement was, right? I mean, Baka yun na yung starting point din talaga. Ano ba yung kilusan na yun? Diba? Uh, yeah, what, what did that uh, movement or that electoral uh, campaign uh, fall short of? No? Uh, what, 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 what is, or maybe the, the better question is, uh, how uh, did that movement lose? Okay, so siguro the, the, the other way to ask to ask that question is, you know, why did Marcos win? Okay. Right? And I think especially for this movement, the the more, what's it called? It, the more profound question is, mm -hmm. bakit na nalo si Marcos kahit may isang Lenny? Mm -hmm. Kasi maintindihan mo, halimbawa, it's okay to speak in Tagalog, right? Yes, of course. Um, yeah, yeah, okay lang na, na parang maintindihan mo, di ba? Na, sige, mananalo si Marcos kasi wala namang yung contender talaga. Pero mm -hmm. in this case, meron eh. No? Mm -hmm. Na may nag well ng support. So I think that's really the question. Now, if you ask me, as a political scientist, mm -hmm. my, my answer will really be, you know, I, I think Marcos won because of the masterful use of traditional means mm -hmm. to electoral victory in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Kasi may mga formula na yan eh. No? Because the conditions have not really changed. Mm -hmm. The social conditions have not changed. The voters have not changed. They've just been Mas, mas dumami lang ang voters, di ba? And merong mga difference yan sa demographics, etc. Pero essentially, the social conditions are there, no? And the, the social and the political conditions are, are basically the same. So, what strategies uh, uh, made for, you know, winning elections in the past, mm -hmm. dahil unchanged naman ang conditions, mm -hmm. um, ano yun? Uh, yun talaga ang makakapagpanalo, no? Unless merong conditions din na, na nagcha-challenge nun. And mm -hmm. I think itong, let's just call it the pink movement, mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, challenged it 
uh, in a way now we did not even know it was there no mm -hmm. and it was it and i think what happened was that there was a it was mobilized because there was a Lenin Robredo also that mobilized mm -hmm. it. Diba? Parang the, the past six years of Duterte, medyo silent ang mga tao eh. Diba? Mm -hmm. Because also of the very high fear factor. Mm -hmm. Right? Sino ba talaga ang magsasalita kung ikukulong ka lang? Mm -hmm. <laughs> diba? Ano yun eh? So, so now I think um, it, ano eh, this, this was really an opposition that we did not see. Of course, very diverse siya. And I think the basic difference is hindi siya ideological, di ba? Ideological in the set, in the mm -hmm. way we know ideological. Of course, there was also an ideological movement, sila Kaliodi. Mm -hmm. That was the ideological one. This one was really a sort of, of political one. And I think if you define it, I would go back to the term pink. No? Okay. Why is it pink? And I think that's because you have a set of people na coming to terms na rin na yung ideals ng EDSA mm -hmm. as represented, for example, by the Yellow Movement, as it mm -hmm. was called that, um, hindi siya tumugma eh, in terms of realities. Mm -hmm. Hindi siya, hindi siya nag down to, to realities and, and benefits. No? So, I think you have here that the kind of recognition na you know, we need to deliver. We need to see results. Mm -hmm. Diba? Kasi, even Duterte, I think some of the pink movement that are in the pink movement also uh, voted for Duterte in the past. No? Yes. Meron ka rin mga ganun eh. Diba? But, but I think also because there's the yearning for something to be done. Especially in a crisis like a pandemic. Right? Uh, so, kasi pag tinanong mo rin yung mga tao, ba't sila nandun? Kasi namatayan sila ng lolo. Namatayan, diba? So, mm -hmm. That was very clear in the past six years. Governance kills, right? I mean, bad governance can really kill. So, mm -hmm. maraming, I think maraming ganoon, no? Na nag come together. And because it was not ideological, ang ideological kasi may linya ka, meron ka ng sinusunod na mm -hmm. analysis, may mm -hmm. sinusunod ka na direction, may sinusunod ka vision, may sinusunod ka na trajectory, lahat. Mm -hmm. Parang malinaw yun. Mm -hmm. Eto, I think, um, they really just wanted some some kind of change that they haven't seen yet, right? And I think that was captured by Lenny. Kasi nga, pag pinag-usapan mo, halimbawa, you want something done. Si Lenny kasi, nagtrabaho siya. Mm -hmm. na, di ba? So I think there's a... Uh, si Lenny na capture na yun eh. Siya yung naging symbol. Eh. Nung ganun, the, the movement was very aspirational uh, mm -hmm. in, in that sense. So I think... Yon. Later on, we can talk about that. At the end of the day, the task, after that kind of movement, mm -hmm. the very vibrant... I don't know if you were there in some of the rallies, John. Yes, I covered uh, five, I think, yeah. Yeah, kaya tama yung volunteerism kasi lahat talaga initiated. Eh. Marami mm -hmm. initiated. Hindi mo kailangang sabihan na punta kayo dito. Pag pumunta naman sila, saya-saya nila. <laughs> like, I remember at the Thanksgiving, my only thought was, Wow, bakit para silang hindi natalo? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and remember, that was the time also that uh, si, si Lenny Robredo said, itutuloy natin to, magtatayo tayo nung, ano ba yung tawag niya? Volunteer. The biggest volunteer movement. So, that, I think, sparked that kind of, of, of di ba? Yung, yung energies nandun eh. That's right. No? I think we can, we, we, we can spend more time on that, no? Uh, on, on the uh, post-election uh, um, activities um, or, or the avenues for working um, after the election. But I want to go back uh, to uh, the earlier point that you made about social and political conditions still being in place. That, that's that's uh, how Marcos was able to uh, engineer this uh, first majority mandate uh, since 1986. No? I, I, I suppose uh, some of the political political conditions would be the alliance building uh, among politicians that allowed, for instance, uh, uh, for the first time in a very long time, a, a, a presidential candidate from the north uh, with a running mate from the south. Uh, I think that was uh, that used to be the part of the formula uh, before martial rule was uh, was declared. 
Uh, there are other conditions, other uh, social conditions. But I just want to ask, um, does that mean that the Robredo campaign had no chance of winning? Uh, okay. The, okay. Was the victory First, of Marcos inevitable? Okay. I think you have to discuss two things mm -hmm. when you want to answer that question. One was, one was the cheating, mm -hmm. right? The election day cheating. Mm -hmm. okay. I think up to now, hindi makamove on yung mga tao kasi laging may ganong tanong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Parang, ganun ba talaga kadami yung bumoto kay Marcos? Mm -hmm. 30 million si Duterte nga. Si Duterte, grabe ang euphoria ng mm -hmm. campaign niya. But he had 16 million. Mm -hmm. He didn't have 30 million, right? So there are things na ganun. A ako naman, ang, I... In a way, tingin ko tama yung ginawa nila Lenny Group na they did not ignite the electoral protest issue. Mm -hmm. no? But because in the first place, they did not have, I guess, really enough resources or enough evidence, for example. Mm -hmm. Kasi mahirap mm -hmm. yun, eh, no? uh, in that situation. Kasi mabilis. And, and you know, immediately after election, yung, yung kami sa policy, nagpatawag agad kami. Nagpakausap kami ng lente, yung mga watchdog, uh, mm -hmm. yung PPCRV, yung pati yung mga sila yung yung mga computer experts natin and mm -hmm. all of them had the same line we couldn't mm -hmm. see the cheating mm -hmm. right in fact when you ask for example nakakatakot bakit ang bilis ng eleksyon nung mm -hmm. nung transmission yeah, yeah. sabi nila uh, that just means it was successful the automated elections were successful mm -hmm. because that's really the way it should be that's it right it should be fast because it's automated now what do i say to that i always just say it's true tapos na ang eleksyon. Legitimate talaga yung pagkapanalo niya. No? Mm -hmm. In the sense. Ano? But I think it's also naive for us to say, oh, the election cheating just happened before the elections. Not on election day. Why? Because it's not logical for a cheater to just stop cheating all of a sudden. <laughs> you really want me to believe that? You're mm -hmm. a cheater today, tomorrow you're clean? Especially when it's crunch time? Mm -hmm. Diba? So, to me, Union. And, and if I were to formulate it, I would say, maybe we don't really know how cheating is done, especially in an automated election, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was there during the elections. Of course, I uh, na ako mag -observe, and I was looking at the election officers, for example. Very minimal naman yung work nila. Yung maglalagay lang sila, di ba, magpa-register sila, maglalagay sila doon ng papel, lalabas yung resibo. But, you know, they don't know the machine. I'm sure we don't know the machine, right? And 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 so so sa akin, the task for the next next election, for example, is to mm -hmm. really understand that mm -hmm. and to say that if we do not understand it, then maybe we shouldn't do it that way, right? Because mm -hmm. the credibility comes from common knowledge, from transparency. You know, even France, for example, has not hindi sila automated. Eh. Mm -hmm. They part ng ano papel sila. Kasi at the end of the day, meron sila pag nag-transmit na yata, yung, meron naman silang efficient part din. No? And, and they're like, yeah, more than 40 million voters yata sa France. And um, all this time, they have not, they have not uh, given that up. Kasi parang ang ano doon, kung may protest, may papel kang makikita. There's a paper trail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, laging hindi nila gini-give up yun. Of mm -hmm. course, that's Something for discussion. Because when you say also we or we were already automated, eh? and then we go back to paper, it's like what? Are we regressing? Are we moving backward? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think one of the tasks is really to come up with you know some analysis of what automated elections is in terms of being a reform. Because the reform may limits yan, eh? diba? uh, yung, It's supposed to shape the behavior of politicians. Mm -hmm. Supposed to shape the behavior of voters, right? Pero it will not also stop politicians from looking, for example, for new ways to cheat, right? So, yun, I think yung ano. So, I think yung ganon, um, that, that's one part of it, really, uh, 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 moving forward. I don't know if you agree with me, John. <laughs> Pero, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I actually think that. Uh, it is uh, an act of political maturity to accept that uh, uh, 
the election results by and large reflected uh, reality uh, because the election results, for instance, were valid or uh, validated the uh, Pulse Asia surveys. Yes. Uh, uh, Pulse Asia. Unfortunately, SWS wasn't much of a player uh, this time around, but uh, th those two uh, over uh, the last generation, uh, their track record has been uh, impressive as far as presidential uh, elections are concerned. So, yeah, I, I would think that that would be part yeah. of it. But of course, as you also said, uh, maybe, or, or, or as you implied, maybe the it, it wasn't so much voter fraud, but vote buying. I mean, I know of one specific city, for instance, uh, which uh, shifted to Marcos because the local candidate uh, behind Marcos uh, put out more money. Uh, as simple as that. No? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, massive yeah. Tao talaga yung vote by. Yeah, but I guess yun nga, automated elections, we shouldn't let go of that discussion, I think, leading mm -hmm. towards the next election. Now, yung sa question nga na, why did Lenny lose? Why did mm -hmm. we lose? No, mm -hmm. I mean, disclosed naman yan yung, ano, no, yung support for Lenny. Um, Yung, I, I listened also to your discussion with Teddy Bagilat and Teddy mm -hmm. Kasinga. And I think that's that part of that is true, no? That we started late, mm -hmm. uh, running, you know, you run against, like, for example, biglang, oh, sige, pagtas ng rallies, mag house to house na tayo. Okay? Mm -hmm. Ang hindi na isip ng mga tao, oh, my God, there are 24.5 million households. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you want to, di ba? So, uh, di, di ba? And elections is a numbers game. Mm -hmm. So, how do you do that? And 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 sometimes there are ways that is not like house to house. Tignan mo si Marcos. Grabe yung TikTok presence niya. Diba? Para na siya nakailang house to house nun. <laughs> diba? So there are there are things really that, as I said, no, mas masterful talaga yung use nila of 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 the strategies. Whether that's uh the, the same naman to tools, eh, pero mm -hmm. ano, pero na master nila and na elevate talaga nila, di ba? Yung yan yung the, the 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 use of new technologies and the gatekeeping. You mm -hmm. know, I've also heard uh, stories of meron silang mga nagpapatotoo, yung mga mm -hmm. missionary, yung parang nagpapatotoo. They're, they're all evangelists, yes. <laughs> yes, there there you go. Yung yung merong nagpapatotoo sa Taliano Gold, nagpapatotoo mm -hmm. doon sa Golden Era ni Marcos, yung ganyan. And and you know, even in the literature who wins election is the, uh, is is uh, always has to do with rootedness in society. No, mm -hmm. rooted ka talaga kasi at the end of the day, boboto yung mga tao based in sa tiwala, eh. no? Yung yung mm -hmm. yung based on their own rationality then and their especially in the Philippines grabe ang ating social affinity as a basis for voting, eh. diba? Right. And right. you know the gatekeepers of Marcos, they lived there. Tayo, nag house lang, house, house lang tayo, alis na tayo. So mm -hmm. it's really the quality of your relationship with voters that will get you to win. And sila naman, ay, hindi naman yan nakikipag-usap sa mga mahirap, di ba? <laughs> Pero yung taga, inutusan nila makipag-usap, palalim talaga sa mga komunidad. And if, if you look at the pink movement, for example, yun yung kulang talaga, di ba? Even in the surveys, yung classes D and... Uh, mm -hmm. D and E. Yeah, D and E. T, especially D. No, mm -hmm. na na majority. So I think union, no, and when you talk about classes, the, the class D, and yan eh, it's that's about culture. Uh, that's about culture, that's about social psychology. <laughs> that's about diva. So pag hindi mo yun na intindihan. So in, in other words, ang implication non malaking bagay yung messaging mo, malaking bagay uh, yung pakiti yung pakikitungo talaga sa kanila, yung pag-intindi talaga kung ano ba yung mahalaga sa kanila. No? And mm -hmm. pag tinignan mo, dahil ganyan, dahil ganyan, sa estado mo rin, di ba, at yung, 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 grabe din yung level of frustration na, ano, ng mga tao, ano yan, they will vote for those na tingin nila, um, kikinabag sila, <laughs> di ba? So, so ganun talaga very transactional eh, ang ang Philippine elections at yun ang hindi natin pa na transform and I think we have to I don't know if you agree with me but I think even the pink movement for example sometimes we have we, we have to to come to terms with the approaches that we use no? kasi alimbawa I yeah. think nakaka cringe yung tayong liwanag sa dilim <laughs> 
sabihin mo yan or man po pagtatawan ang galang yan. <laughs> diba? Diba? So, may ganun eh, yung, yung mga approaches na instead of really building deeper relationships with communities, you highlight your otherness. Mm-hmm. Kahit nga yung laylayan, inaano mo eh, di ba? Hina-highlight mo na iba ka. Nasa laylayan ka. Parang ganun. So, it's 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 that kind of messaging. I think that ano, I this of of course these are just based also on my conversations with people and what I observe, right? So, mm-hmm. but I think these are the things that need to be examined. And yeah, there, there's uh, there's a lot really to uh, to uh, yeah. to to thresh out, right? And to talk. I mean, for instance, yeah. the, the question of Lai Lai, and I, I can understand. No, yeah. on, on the one side, you you have uh, liberal paternalism, right? Like we're going out to the to the to, to the margins of society, but at the same time, I, I can understand, and I think it really c- came from Lenny. It's her understanding of Pope Francis's uh, uh, vision of going to the peripheries. Eh? <laughs> so yeah, there's yeah. that there's a tension. So how do you how do you put that? Uh, you know how how do you balance? How do you strike a balance? Yeah. I'm actually yeah. struck with something that you said earlier about Marcus winning because he mastered the old strategies, and I, I I was too young then, but um, too Marcus, young. <laughs> okay, okay. Marcus course, yeah. the, the first yeah. time, there was actually a battle of movies. No, Marcos had his own movie uh, about his life story versus then Makapagal. There was a battle of the books. Uh, mm-hmm. Marcos got Hartzell Spence. Uh, I forget who the author was. American author for for um, for Makapagal. Uh, I, I bring this up because. Even the new look that you know we're seeing uh, with uh, Marcos Jr., for instance, his own uh, presence, massive presence on YouTube and on TikTok. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's really just the old strategy, but um, you know, uh, updated for the 21st century, right? It's like yeah. alternative sources of information. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's much- like you know, getting the mouse to a different way. <laughs> but it's the same mouse. It's the same. You know what I mean? It's like, mm-hmm. di ba? Kasi you win naman because of perception. Eh. If they perceive you mm-hmm. to be the one, di ba? They will mm-hmm. vote for you. And Marcos was very successful in doing that. Di ba yung mga TikTok mo is about, you know, what you and your son wear. Gusto-gusto ng mga tao yan, di ba? Mm-hmm. Light lang, di ba? Tapos, yes, but they, they really uh, succeeded in humanizing uh, yes. Marcus's. I, w- yeah. One of the things I, I spent some time doing some research on on TikTok, and one of the things that struck me was that the the least political of the Marcos siblings, uh, Irene Marcos, is a staple of TikTok. No, there's so many TikTok videos about how simple simple she is, yeah. she is how elegant, but you know, yeah. down to earth, and it's like, yeah, yeah. taken you know, to, uh, by itself rather. I mean, it doesn't make much of an impact, but taken together, it's part of this uh, uh, re-imaging of the Marcoses. No? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't I mean, know if this part, first part of the conversation is uh, uh, <laughs> helping our audience, you know, <laughs> move on or move forward. My understanding is that uh, to move on means, you know, just, you know, to forget uh, the reasons for losing, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, just to barrel uh, uh, forward. I think moving forward means to actually, uh, to use the philosophical term, consent to necessity. You know, look, look at you yeah. know, this is what happened to us, and then this is what we can yeah. we, we can do. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to move the discussion uh, in that direction. I want to ask you first. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, uh, Lenny Robredo uh, launched Angat Buhay NGO, uh, which was uh, mm-hmm. well received. But do you think there is a need for a political equivalent of of Angat Buhay NGO? Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's a political equivalent, but I just know that there is a need to sustain or to consolidate what was gained with mm-hmm. the pink movement. No, and mm-hmm. if you look at the pink movement as a movement, what it means is that it's a it was a channel for participation, mm-hmm. even for those who have never participated before. In, in that kind of very visible manner, no? mm-hmm. uh, and and in that kind of very collective manner. So mm-hmm. when Lenny Robredo formed Angat Buhay and said it's an NGO, she's mm-hmm. not going to political. Yun ang nawala. Asan na ang channel of participation? 
di ba? Mm-hmm. Kaya ang taas nung ante, nung we will form the biggest volunteer group. Because that's the channel for participation. And now yes, when yes. you say Angat Buhay is an NGO, that means you have a few people servicing communities and NGOs are very valuable. But mm-hmm. it doesn't connect that. Nasaan yun? Paano na ang mga tao? Paano na yung mga kakamping? Di ba? Mm-hmm. Di ba? But at the same time, you know, I always say, um, kasi I think people now are also pointing the finger Lenny, eh. Di ba? Mm-hmm. Which I think is also unfair. I mean, to me, you know, it's a, uh, it's, um, it takes courage to say no, ha? Huh? And to me, that's what she did. Mm-hmm. She said, at hanggang dito ako. Di ba? Mm-hmm. And we have to respect her for that. For that decision, diba? And if anything, we have to just push Lenny and say, okay, okay lang na nandiyan ka. But let's continue the conversation. Yeah. Paano natin gagawin? No? Yeah. And that's where we should go. And, and I don't think Lenny is saying no to that conversation. Mm-hmm. Diba? I think that's what she meant when she said, oh, Lisa Ontiveros, ikaw na ang, ang leader namin ngayon, diba? Hindi yeah. naman siya sabing wala na kami. Diba? Yeah. Nag-define siya. So to me, mm-hmm. that's, that's, I think we have to respect that. Now, mm-hmm. and, and it takes courage. I think only a woman can say that. <laughs> to be reluctant about power. <laughs> hindi yung gagawin ng lalaki. Sorry. Okay, so, but anyway. But what, what, form, what form uh, should uh, the political aspect take? Okay. Uh, will it be a political party? Is it a pol- political coalition? Would it be like... Uh, Something like Kumpil, yung kongreso ng mamamalaan. Ma- ma- I, I think the best movements kasi are organic. Eh. Okay. Yung organically grow. Ibig sabihin nun, you know, you become a movement just by being together always. <laughs> by by mm-hmm. doing things together. You know, I was with Akbayan, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and and we were so diverse. And marami sa amin galit pa sa isa't isa. <laughs> <Di ba? laughs> but we became Akbayan only because we had, we were forced to make a statement on the US, on the economy, on that. and it's only by working together that you become. Why? Because a movement implies unity, right? But unity. <laughs> na usurp na yung word na yan. But, mm-hmm. but, yeah, I think, so one way to go about it is, una, I would suggest really conversations. Conversations muna. Mm-hmm. Kasi, if you look at the pink movement, it was very diverse, no? In the sense, diverse siya ng location, diverse siya ng ano, ng, tsaka hindi siya ideological, diverse yung pag-iisip ng mga tao. So, mm-hmm. to be a movement, you have to have some consensus building. Parang kailangan magtanungan tayo, uy, ano bang ayaw mo? Ano bang gusto mo? Diba? Mm-hmm. Kasi, during the elections, that was clear. We did not want Marcos. Mm-hmm. We did not want, we wanted to reverse the trend of a Marcos Duterte. Right? Mm-hmm. Of that kind of right-wing uh, populism and, mm-hmm. and all that. But not all of that would, not all of those who were there would articulate it that way. So we need to to go into conversation. Ano yun? Ano yun? Diba? Ang, ang, ang malinaw lang, everyone wanted to change government. Right? But how exactly do you do that in between yeah. elections and mm-hmm. in preparation for the next election? should not be just, you know, the opinion of one person or one group or, you know, it should be, you know, because we learn also in conversing with each other, eh, na parang, di ba? So, I think that's a very important part. Now, to win elections, you have to have an organization mm-hmm. because you have to be more systematic in getting the support eh, and getting the numbers. And uh, so, it could be a political movement, it could be a social movement, it could be a... a but whatever it is, come election time, it has to act like a political party mm-hmm. because it has to have candidates. It has, diba? only a political party can field candidates. Mm-hmm. Diba? So it cannot be just, you know, ramming on government. It has to become a potential government. That's what a party is. Okay. You are a potential mm-hmm. government. So, yun ma, ma bigat yun pag inisip mo. But that means you have to think in terms of May 2025. May 2028, mm-hmm. <laughs> May, ganon. And, mm-hmm. and we should push that because karamihan din sa pink movement, kabataan. Mm-hmm. Tayo, okay na tayo eh, kasi matanda na tayo, di ba, John? Pero, <laughs> pero sila, what is six years of your life? Speaking of kabataan, um, 
before we started the show, we had a chance to converse, and, and you said something about some of your students, you know, looking for uh, um, forms of political participation. So I'd like to ask you, you know, specific to young people who were um, energized by the movement, by the campaign, and now are thinking of, I don't know, working for Senator Risa or... Yeah. Uh, joining a political party and so on, what, what would your advice be? Ako, I always tell students, uh, if you want to change something, choose your movement. <laughs> Join mm-hmm. something. <laughs> Don't just sit there. <laughs> diba? Mm-hmm. Kasi change happens through organizations. Eh. Mm-hmm. It cannot happen lang just by one person or by, you know. So if you want to do something, find people who think like you and who will act like, you know. Uh, you have to uh, di ba, wala lang change kung wala na tayong gagawin. So hanggat meron tayong gagawin, di ba? So, you join organizations, you form organizations if you cannot find an organization you want to join. Join government, join Risa Antiveros, join whatever. Join mm-hmm. the, the trade union movement, join, mm-hmm. di ba? So, I, I, I always encourage my students to do that, right? Because change is always through organizations. It's not, it's not through just you know, uh, people saying, oh, gawin nyo to, ganyan. Hindi, hindi nangyayari sa ganon, di ba? Yung proseso ng pagbabago, alam natin yan. And, now, the more tricky part is when students come to me and say, especially those who are graduating, mm-hmm. you know, mom, are we going to, to join the Marcos government? Uh, di ba? Paano mo sasagutin yun dyan? Pag, ano? <laughs> uh, <laughs> was, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. No, I, I said, oh, it's my it's my role to ask the questions. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. no, no. So how how no, would you answer that? <laughs> no, because they would say, for example, Mom, because if I join, parang I'm betraying my principles. And, you know, it's six years. But, but it's not just six years. If we don't do anything, it's going to be 12 years. It's, it's going to be 24 years. So, Sa akin naman, don't look for a perfect government. That's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. ba? The government of your dreams, parang, parang ano yan eh, you have to make it that. It doesn't just, you know. Uh, so, if you ask me, my advice lang to students is, you ano, you ask yourself, what are your bottom lines? Right? Mm-hmm. And what are your preferences? But, kasi ang government naman is not a monolithic organization. Right? Mm-hmm. So, Ang, ang ano dyan, when you join government, make sure that you're working for the part that will help build institutions, that will help, you know, uh, re- re- really concretize yung ganong mandate ng government. No? Mm-hmm. But when it comes to the point where your work will be about saving a president, mm-hmm. don't stay. I mean, <laughs> but nandyan ka kung, kung yun lang pala ang trabaho mo taga save ng president. Huwag na, maglali ka na lang sa labas, di ba? <laughs> ano? Kasi parang parang di ba? So, sa akin, whether you join government or not, it's not parang it, it's 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 you have to really ask yourself, eh, what are my bottom lines? Kasi when you join government or when you align with the ruling party for example, mm-hmm. or ano, you have to ask yourself, what are the deal breakers? Yeah. When will I leave? Mm-hmm. And you know, people never ask that anymore. Eh? And uh, that kind of question kasi is also best left to to collective decision, hindi lang yung individual. Because mm-hmm. you will matter most in government if you're a critical mass within. Mm-hmm. Pero uh, meron din naman, pero depende nga kung nasaan. So sinasabi ko, halimbawa, huwag ka lang mag-PCOO secretary siguro. <laughs> You have to defend the president. At, <laughs> but mm-hmm. there's a lot of spaces in local government. Mm-hmm. Work for, I don't know, work for Vico Soto. Yeah. Work for, mm-hmm. you know, for mm-hmm. or become a Vico Soto. Diba? Uh, you know, become a... You... Why not? Right? So... Uh, I, I'm, I'm glad you yeah. raised this uh, because I, I actually uh, had a prepared question about dealing with you know the likes of RC Balisakan, Tuts Ople, Popolotilia, no? Uh, 
people that we that we know are uh, men and women of integrity uh, and competent. Yeah. Uh, and yet they're working for the second Marco. So it's like, yeah. uh, so how do we deal with them? I'm, I'm glad that you uh, already uh, yeah. gave a uh, yeah. Yeah. partial answer to that. But you you want to take that head on? Um, uh, if someone comes to you, not a young student, but someone saying, well, the president's looking for a department of health secretary. <laughs> <laughs> Secretary of Health, no less. Okay, what what would you say? Um, you know, it really depends on who you are, where you sit at the moment, who you're with, what your analysis is of what you can do in that mm -hmm. certain post. Mm -hmm. Parang sa akin lang mas may may hirap lang talaga yung alibawa yan yung cabinet secretary. I think kasi yung technocracy kasi mm -hmm. in a way deodorizes politics you know the <laughs> you know what i mean it's like you're saying okay let's leave politics out but you never can and that was the very lesson also of marco senior he had the best people but they couldn't stop the corruption mm -hmm. they couldn't stop the cronyism mm -hmm. couldn't stop that so when you cannot stop that what then are you contributing to mm -hmm. right? when that is the dominant Kalakaran. <laughs> so, I think, uh, yun, I cannot also say they are bitter. Kasi, ano naman yun, eh, depende yan sa pagtingin talaga nila na, you know, the level of risk they are willing to take. Right? But, if you ask me, for example, mm -hmm. uh, will I work for, it, it depends nga eh, pero, yung ganong level, mm -hmm. na, as I said ka, ganong level kasi, ang trabaho mo is to save the president. Diba? Okay pa ako kung isang biuro dyan sa, ano, di ba? Yung tutulungan ko kayo sa housing nyo, tutulungan ko kayo. Pero kung nando na lahat ng gagawin ko is to make sure pogi siya, parang no way. Diba? Parang, baka hindi ko gagawin. <laughs> so, yun yeah. lang siguro. And, uh, yeah, I guess, um, for example, yung kay Duterte, di ba? Yung, yun nga, ano ba ang deal breakers? Dami na niyang pinatay, hindi pa rin. Di ba? Parang ganoon. Parang, and that's a personal thing. You'll have to ask that of yourself. It and is you a personal it. decision, yes. Yes, and of course, but if you are there because of an organization, the mm -hmm. organization also has to make that decision. What mm -hmm. are our bottom lines? What are our... Yeah, so there's, I guess, mahirap siya talaga na tanong, di ba? Kasi... Uh, I, I don't know if uh, uh, we've really answered the question how to move forward because we, we, we're, we, we've been clearing so much of the preliminaries first no i mean i think it's yeah. it's an important uh, part of the of the preparation no? uh and so I'm, I'm very grateful for that i i, I want to ask though uh maybe one last question because we're we're running long no? okay um uh, what do you say to people who uh join the campaign or uh join the movement because of a sense of crisis no? uh, this is a break uh, make or break election for the democratic project in the philippines and now, seven to day, seven to two days later, uh, it seems that uh, instead of a sense of crisis, they are feeling a sense of normalcy. It's like, uh, okay, who's going to be the next cabinet appointee? You know, who's going to be the? It's like, uh, okay, back to normal. Um, yeah. How? How? And I think that's part of the reason why uh, some are not yet able to come to terms. It's like. Okay, we we had we were in, on crisis mode, and then now everybody's saying, okay, you know, just uh, you don't want the government to fail. <laughs> so, yeah. where do you strike the balance? So there's no, I don't know if it's a question of balance. It's a questions mm -hmm. of absence of an opposition, right? Mm -hmm. Normal talaga, because within government, wala mo kontra, mm -hmm. Ang question na lang, kasi remember, government, the Marcos regime is a coalition of the elites. So as long as these elites, you know, make all these bargains that are comfortable, that make them comfortable or they're comfortable with, yun na yun, it will continue, right? It will thrive. It might even uh, do good in some aspects, for example, right? Uh, so may ganun, pero yung, so kung walang opposition sa loob, kailangan may opposition sa labas. Kaya nga sayang yung pink movement eh, kasi yun na yun. And, and you know, I, I laugh and people say, we have to go to the, we have to go beyond the pink movement. I just go pink movement pa lang, hindi nyo pa nga makonsolidate. Saan pa kayo pupunta? 
Ano ba yung nanap nyo? <laughs> diba? And, and the first step is to stop the demoralization. Right? And that that's why we need nga political leadership also. To hmm. say, you know, we're not yet okay, but we will be. If, if, if we just, you know, continue with the track of, of criticizing, mm-hmm. being critical of what mm-hmm. needs to be criticized, right? And to, to, to say, we know we want something different. You are there, but you're not the one we want. And we will work for what we want in the future, right? And every step from here on will be towards that direction. Pero yung ganon, kaya yun nga, yung energies ng pink movement, yun ang medyo nag-fizzle out. So, mm-hmm. but I really believe it's just there. Yeah. So, so it has to be revived, I guess. Yeah. Uh, on that note, uh, uh, we, uh, we'll need to end our very lively conversation. You know, we can go on and on, but, uh, know. Uh, we, you know, we, 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 uh, we need to uh, call it a day. Uh, to Dr. Carmel uh, Melay Aba of the Ateneo de Manila University, thank you for your time, your insights, and your work defining and defending the public square. Thank you. To paraphrase a great naturalized Filipino, Father John Carroll S.J., things take time. That's why there's no time to lose. Those of us who have not yet come to terms with the second Marcos presidency, time's a wasting. We need to accept the reality now so we can preserve our history and defend our democracy. We must engage with the new government, but let us do so partly on our own terms. We engage not because we are in the new normal, but because it's still the same old crisis of democracy, modernity, governance. That's it for us tonight. The next step for engaged citizens is always to take a more active part in rebuilding our democracy. See you in the public square. This is John Neri. Thank you and good night.